Hi, I'm back with a book review. And I also just did the most typical me thing is I thought I hit the record button. So I've been sitting here talking to myself for like three minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry to myself. But anyway, so <laughs> let me recap everything I just said out loud to myself. Um, I'm going to be reviewing George Orwell's 1984. I finished reading this a couple of weeks ago, but I hadn't got a minute to actually sit down and review it. So that's what we're doing today. And then I kind of wanted to show you guys my current reads, but I've like been inchworming through them. Like I'm not nearly close to being done with my current reads. So maybe I'll just post them in the comments or we can talk about it somewhere. I did post a, um, a short video of my two most recent books I picked up that I started reading. Um, and at the moment, I actually rearranged my bookshelves, so I might not even be able to find them. Um, yeah, I don't know where my current books went. Oh, I think I see two of them. Yes, I see like two or three of them over there. Um, let me just show you a little bit more of my, there's more books. So, um... The Ninth House up there is one I've been inching through. It's very good so far. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is like my first uh, fictional mystery and that's been good so far. I'm almost finished with Sarah J. Mass's A Court of Thorns and Roses, that little red book on bottom. Nearly done with that book. I will say it's not my favorite book, but it's also not bad. It's a very interesting read, and I'm interested mostly to get through it and get to book two, because I've heard that book two is much better. But anyway, so there are some of my current reads right there. And then over here, we have planned reads, and I think, yeah, The Picture of Dorian Gray already finished, so I will be doing a review on The Picture of Dorian Gray. Anyway, today, we're going to talk about 1984. Now, if you haven't read this, I should always start with if you haven't read it, um, there's going to be spoilers in this video, so maybe go read it, come back to this video, compare your notes to mine. Um, but if you don't plan on reading this, then I can, I can give you the skinny. Um, I So, I initially wanted to read this book when I was a freshman in high school, but my current English literature teach, teach she advised me against it and instead I ended up reading um Alice in Wonderland slash Through the Looking Glass and I actually fell in love with that book and the following book. There's two books in one. I had them in the same copy. Um and so I ended up reading that instead and I never got around to reading this in high school so it was on my like bucket list. If this is not on your to read list and you haven't read it yet, if you like dystopian um, fiction or fantasy, I would recommend this. If you're not into darker topics or if you're not into psychological kind of thriller stuff, I would not recommend this. Um, but someone like me, um, this isn't my typical read, but I loved it. So that also, if you just want something new and refreshing and even different from what you typically enjoy reading, this is a good book. This is a wonderful, classic, fantastic book. So, reasons why. Um, as you can see, I didn't page tab this time. That's simply because, for me, this was a sit down and digest it um, as much as I can. It was an enjoyable read. It was not for study purposes or, you know, I didn't have any... I actually didn't have any specific chapters I wanted to refer back to in my review because... The story, not to say that it's redundant, but it's a very daily basis story. You're basically following the main character the whole time. And he has a somewhat set routine because it takes place in a very controlled setting. So, um, of course, the, the story gets more and more difficult and complex towards the climax and then through the end. But leading up to it, there's not a whole lot of differentiation from day to day. Like, you understand his 
feelings and his opinions from chapter one and stuff and so on. Um, but that's why I didn't mark anything in particular. Um, if you guys have read this and there was something that struck you like seriously hard during the book, let me know because I'm kind of curious about like just what you, uh, of course, you guys, your thoughts and like things that really, really stuck out to you. Because for me, if I had to say something that stuck out to me, it would be the whole story. I, oh my gosh, this, it's so, <laughs> classic doesn't even begin to describe it. Anyway, I've been talking for five minutes. So if you have read this, and you know what I'm talking about, I would say that the main character when I was visualizing it in my head, it reminded me of Tom Hiddleston, who plays Loki on a lot of stuff, um, a lot of the, all the movies and the TV show. Um, yeah, just the main character is very like poised, and he focuses a lot on his deep thoughts and intentions, and his inner monologue is just very, very profound and deep, but then also sometimes very blunt. Um, and it just reminded me so much of Tom Hiddleston. So the whole time I was reading this, I was just picturing, you know, how you can kind of play a movie in your head. That's how my imagination um, goes is everything when I'm reading, it just turns into a whole nother world. And Tom Hiddleston was main character. So um, let me give a, a review of the plot line, time and place, other characters. Uh, I would say that we're just going to refer to, wait, actually, oh crap. Um, how have I done this? I can't believe I've done this. I've forgotten the main character's first name. Winston, there we go. Winston has a love interest in this book. Um, and someone that he admires and sort of kind of... No, a, a separate person there's a third person um there's a man that he starts to look up to during the book and sort of feels like this is a person he could potentially confide in but the world that they're set in is a dystopian um what's the word it's opposite of democracy oh my gosh hang on I am literally looking it up as we speak on my laptop. Uh, dictatorship. <laughs> the word was escaping me. So he's living in basically a dictatorship and the dictator would be Big Brother. And if you've ever heard the phrase, Big Brother is watching you, it's because they have um, iconography everywhere about Big Brother. And when you're in a room, even alone, Imagine there's a giant iPad screen on the wall and there's a camera that you literally cannot cover up. You cannot turn the microphone off or I think maybe in some parts you can get to places where they can't hear you. It's very hard to tell. And that's the point. Like it's a, it's hard to tell if you're being watched or listened to or not. Um, so it's like Iron Fist, Demo or Iron Fist Dictatorship. Um, there's some very graphic stuff, even in the very first chapter, about, you know, uh, killing and people dying and war and all these things. Um, and within the first several chapters, I think we come to find out who the antagonist is. But ironically enough, the antagonist of the book is someone that you and I would kind of look at as like a hippy dippy. Um, this is a cute way for me to say someone who is, would paint the picture for democracy, someone who would, um, bring forth fair rights and justice and equality and freedom and, um, um, someone who would basically just, yeah, like fight for human rights, um, and fight for privacy too and all this stuff. Um, so it's just sort of backwards because this is the setting is this world where you're not allowed to meet with others in private. You're not allowed to 
live your life as you would choose. You're not even allowed to dress the way you would like. You're told where you where you go to work and everything. Every aspect of your life is decided for you. Um, and you're closely watched constantly. So George Orwell's story is basically about Winston and how Winston feels about all of this and what he's planning to do in case of all of it. Like he ends up um, becoming infatuated with this girl that um, works in the same building that he does and he doesn't know how to handle it. Um, he has scarce knowledge on what happens when you become attracted to another person um, or when you would think of uh, getting married or having children. Um, he has horrible thoughts about um, the children in this setting are very, they're very mind washed, brainwashed into like becoming little spies and telling on their parents if they see something that they've been taught is wrong. So Winston has a lot of thoughts about, well, if I fall in love with someone, what happens then? Because that could be, it's not, it's no longer natural to just fall in love. It's, it's in fact scary to fall in love. Um, so yeah, this book poses a lot of really deep concepts that will have you thinking for a long time. Um, for that reason alone, this is like 10 out of 10. If anything, I think I might give it a 9 out of 10 because, um, spoiler alert about the ending. If you want to pause here, if you do want to read this, I'm going to go into about the ending. The book ends in Winston's demise, as far as I understood it. The whole book, Winston is trying to fight the system and eventually he in fact loses that fight um and that broke my heart <laughs> because i not that i thought this book was gonna be a win for winston but i was really hoping it would be a win for winston and in the end it wasn't because eventually once you get to like the final chapters winston is caught by the police in the setting and he's taken and tortured and you know, basically they try to force you into mind control. I'll let that sing in for a second. Um, this book's really dark. But so they force Winston into this mind control setting and they basically try to re-educate him and tell him that, hey, any of the feelings you're having are not true. They actually delve into this huge um, discourse about what really is truth and what really is reality and that gets it gets so messy um but not that I wasn't able to follow it I was able to follow it really well but it's just very very um deep uh, for lack of a better term so uh Winston eventually ends up succumbing to um the mind control eventually it takes him longer than you would expect as the reader um we kind of find out through what they put Winston through is how strong of a person he is and it was really admirable um but yeah I I personally didn't like the ending <laughs> not that I was disappointed in the book one bit I just I have you know when you're hoping for something you know how you feel so been 14 minutes um I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say unless I should just wrap up here um let me know if this suffices as a good book review because I'm still trying to figure out like what specific points about a book that um sorry I have a notification what specific points about a book you guys want to know um versus me just rambling about how I felt about a book might not be what you're looking for. Um, but those are my thoughts uh, so far. If we want to have more discuss more discourse in the comments, 
please leave me a comment and I have seen a lot of your comments about books you want me to read and to review so I am compiling a list and I promise I will get to all of them um I just need time <laughs> um but anyway so that was George Orwell's 1984 thank you so much for watching and I appreciate everybody so far who has subscribed um it's really cool to see other people interested in the books that I'm talking about and then sharing books that they're interested in. I really appreciate every single comment. So, okay. Hopefully I will see you soon. Um, if you guys want more different style content too, please let me know because I also do, um, I paint in my free time. Um, my boyfriend and I travel when we can. I could make vlogs um, as well. So if you're also interested in seeing any of that, let me know. Um, alright. Thank you so much. Bye.